So yeah, I've been using the Greedy for 15 years. It's kind of embarrassing, but I'm kind of scared to belay without the Greedy. -gree. <laughs> Llevo usando el Greedy desde que empecé a escalar y es el único sistema de aseguramiento que he utilizado y creo que es el que con el que me quedo, ¿no? Siempre me parece súper cómodo, sencillo y eficaz, ¿no? Yeah, I'm really psyched about the new Greedy because it's just smaller, more compact. You know, it's really nice that you can climb with thinner ropes too because that's really important for me climbing with a skinny rope. Most of the time I climb with a, between a 9.1 and a 9.6 or something like that. Me gusta más 9.7, eh. Es ligera y es un poco más segura, creo, eh. Aujourd'hui, les grandes voies extrêmes, la difficulté est est vraiment vraiment haute pour grimper sur un niveau très haut, genre Alibaba. Il faut que tout soit parfait et aussi niveau matos, il faut qu'on soit le plus léger possible. On grimpe avec une corde simple et on assure avec un grigui. Le grigui 2 il est parfait pour ça parce qu'il est petit, il est léger et ça te permet à être encore mieux. To have this new grigui that works on this size rope is, is really key for me. And it's also really nice, the new one it has a really nice smooth lowering action so you can really control the, the opening closure of the thing. For sport climbing, it's so good the Grigri because when you're trying a project and you're falling over and over again and you're hanging and it can be really tiring for the belayer. Sí, porque puedes trabajar mucho los movimientos y el compañero que asegura puede de vez en cuando relajar. Con el ocho siempre tienes que estar con la tensión de estar con las manos apretando bastante fuerte y no puedes trabajar la vez tanto tiempo con un ocho. Acabaría igual el compañero acaba muy cansado. Con el Grigri es una ventaja. Especially with this new Grigri, that it really gives you a lot more control with the lowering action. So you can really be more precise with that and lower them just at the right speed that they need to be lowered. That's that's really key too. Oh man! You know, for me, I still take it very seriously who belays me. You know, I really like to have that connection with my belayer and know them and know that they're really paying attention. And just having a, a personal connection that they know my climbing style, they know how to to read my movements and they can really uh, you know follow me closely and give me the right amount of slack at the right moment you just kind of have this intuitive connection wait 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 it's not finished yet steve come on hi guys my name is steve mcclure so when you buy a belay device, do you ever take the time to look at one of these things? These things are packed full of information and they usually go straight in the trash. Take a time just to have a look through these things. So what have we got in here? First of all, be attentive. A lot of stuff happens at the cliff. People are climbing a lot, things going around. Keep your eye on the climber all the time. Secondly, always hold the brake inside of the rope. Now when you're climbing for a long time, it's quite easy to get a bit distracted, you could be dealing for hours, but it's most important to do that. Even if you've got cold hands, you want to put your hands in your pocket, you can still do that. Don't be tempted to reach down, grab a cup of tea or whatever, always keep hold of that rope. Thirdly, tie a knot in the end of the rope. Now being lowered off the end of the rope is the most common cause of accident in sport climbing. As a climber, it's your responsibility to make sure there's a knot in the end. Okay. So, setting up the device, take great care to make sure that the rope is through the device the correct way. So the last thing to do before you start climbing is a partner check or a buddy check if you're American. 
Have a look to see if the climber is tied on properly, and you look to see if you are on b properly. There's loads more things we can do before setting off, and everybody has their own individual thing. Make sure you go through at least these processes. If everything's good, then off you go. So, on the other side of this technical notice, how to use the device. The Grigri should really be used as any normal B-Lane device, the same as any normal friction plate. And that is, we always make sure we have one hand on the climber side of the rope, and one hand on the braking side of the rope. This is the principal B-Lane position, we always must adopt this position. For feeding rope out, giving slack, we push the rope through the device, and for taking in slack, we pull the rope back through the device. Just the same as you would do with a normal friction device. Okay, so you know how it is. Sometimes the climber wants the rope really fast for those lightning clips. It can be really hard to pay out the rope as fast as they want, and they don't want the rope to be tight. So the best way to avoid this, really, is to allow a bit of movement in your B-Lane position. Step forward towards the crag and pay out at the same time. Occasionally, of course, they want the rope really fast and that's the time when you've got to adopt a different position with your hands. Brace the index finger of your brake hand against the lip on the moving side plate and press your thumb onto the cam, still holding the brake side of the rope. The other hand holds the climber side of the rope and pulls the rope out of the device. Remember, your hands must immediately return to the principal B-Lane position. This method works best because at all times you have your hand on the braking side of the rope. Whilst your thumb is holding open the cam on the device, the rope is still through the palm of your hand, and at any time, you can instantly clamp the rope. So, what happens if a climber should fall? Well, the golden rule, as we know, is always keep your eye on the climber. If you do this, you'll be prepared. Keep your hand on the braking side of the rope, that's most important. Do not at any point let go of this rope, and do not be tempted to hold the climber side of the rope by itself. This will lead to injury for sure. If you want to give a bit of a dynamic fall, then you can go with the fall. Allow yourself to be taken by the fall. Move in towards the rock, or even give a small jump. This will give a much softer fall on the climber, stopping the impact being so great. Take a look at the bottom of the leaflet. It shows you a lot of things that you shouldn't do. It might seem obvious, but it pays to just take a quick look.